Hey, Kate, how you doing? Hi, I'm good for you. Not too bad. Um, so let's just jump straight into this. Um, why don't you tell people um, how this all happened, how this all started for you? Uh, how osteitis pubis started? Or how the osteitis pubis clinic came about? Oh, let's go with the very beginning. How did it all Okay, so I was very active during my pregnancy and I did lots of triathlon and I did lots of running and wanted to show that pregnant people could do whatever the bloody hell they wanted. Uh, <laughs> uh, turns out they can't. Uh, so, um, I had been doing, I did an Ironman about two or three months before I got pregnant, so I just sort of wanted to continue that fitness and I, I had got to a really, really high level of fitness before I got pregnant and I just didn't really want to lose it. So I carried on exercising until literally the day I gave birth. Um, but <laughs> right towards the end, I started to get like this really weird groin pain. And when you're pregnant, like it's really normal to get groin pain, and it's usually either symptoms pubis or uh, disorder, or it's just like um, ligament pain uh, from all the relaxants. So I just kind of assumed it was that, and that's what everybody said. Uh, and then I gave birth and assumed at some point it would get better, uh, and it didn't get better. Uh, I started running again a few weeks after and it was still there. I saw some physios who gave me lots of exercises that didn't really help. Um, and then I, I sort of, I just kept running through the pain because I thought maybe when I give up breastfeeding that'll help because that's what everybody said. And then uh, it didn't. <laughs> and I went for a run, I ran a race to be fair on my birthday on mud uh, for a few kilometers and couldn't walk for two weeks. Um, and eventually the physio I was seeing referred me for an MRI and they diagnosed osteitis pubis. And the treatment here for osteitis pubis is just rest. Uh, and I did rest and I did a few other things. I had some manual manipulation. And then uh, I saw another surgeon and he said, do more rest. So I stopped swimming. I stopped, he said, don't walk any more than a mile. Uh, <laughs> And it just got to the point where I was doing like literally nothing and I had qualified to become a personal trainer and I couldn't really learn a lot of the stuff I wanted to learn to teach people because I was being told by everybody not to move. And so by the time I found Jason, uh, I had not really moved very much for six months or so and probably more than that. And I was just getting worse and I knew deep down in my heart this was the wrong thing. Like I knew but every medical professional was telling me, no, this is the right thing. You just have to rest until it's better. But I knew I was getting worse and the limit of that I could push to was just diminishing rather than getting further. So uh, people on the forum had been talking uh, about the Osteitis Pubis Clinic and on Facebook. And I was kind of tempted to leave it because I was so sick of people moaning about having Osteitis Pubis. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and things are very different here than they are in America, where a lot of members are, and they get PRP injections, they get all this different kind of treatment, and here it's just you don't really get anything. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, I thought, well, I may as well just contact this guy and see what he's got to say. So that's how I got to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was I going to say? So, and then I came along, and I was like, don't rest. That's stupid. Don't do that. He go lose those really heavy weights. Like, that'll never be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically. And like, <clears throat> it's weird because, you know, as someone in, interested in fitness anyway, it was always going to be uh, easier, an easier sell to me, probably. <laughs> uh, and you were telling me what I wanted to hear. Interestingly, my father told me a few, uh, maybe last year, he said, you can't just keep going around physios until you find the answer that you want to hear. And I sort of said, Who are you telling me that? Yeah. I can and I will. <laughs> I will. So I basically, I think you're the sixth physio that I've had contact with or seen. Uh, and yeah, you told me what I wanted to hear and that was great. So, uh, but having said that, uh, I think anybody with a chronic injury will agree. Uh, there's still a huge amount of fear that comes with moving because, you know, you've, you've been told that moving has done this to you. Like I did ballet for years. I did endurance triathlon. I ran when I was pregnant. I did all the things people tell you will ruin your joints. And um, so I am, and I still have fear, uh, but I have a lot less fear than I used to. But when you were saying, yeah, we're going to lift some really heavy weights, I'm going, but that really hurts. So why would you make me do that? <laughs> um, just to give people who aren't familiar with the reference, just 
Explain to them what an Iron Man is. Uh, so an Iron Man is, two, I have to remember now because I've not done one for three years, two and a half, two and a half mile swim, 112 mile bike ride and a marathon. Um, so yeah, it's a triathlon. It's just a really long triathlon. Um, I like endurance. I'm better at endurance. <laughs> so just again, to put things in reference, when someone say runs a marathon, they like oh. people are kind of like, wow, that must have been really hard, right? Like a marathon must be really hard. <laughs> So uh, Iron Man is like three marathons, right? <laughs> kind of, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, but it's not, it's, you know, you train for it. And uh, I'm better at that kind of distance. Actually, half Iron Man, I think, is like a really perfect uh, for me because I can fit it in easily around my life. Uh, and it's just obviously half the distances and it's not it's not too challenging. Um, but yeah, Iron Man, it does take a lot of training. Like you can't just walk up to it and not to do any training. <laughs> But to like to put things in like I guess perspective to go from like being that kind of level of fitness to then having to like like you know uh, negotiate this new reality where there is no exercise um, must yeah. be a killer. Look, I'll be on, I'll be honest. I might I genuinely might cry. In fact, I cried in our first session. Um, because you know when I when I found you like uh, I had moved so I moved to cities when I was eight months pregnant. We moved to cities. I got I my career I had a really good career in um, the charity sector and um, to retrain uh, I had a baby which is like massively overwhelming obviously you know we wanted to have a baby but it's still those first few months are hard you're sleep deprived our dog was killed in an accident we couldn't find her for five days and uh, like this, yeah it was awful she was hit by a train and um, she was my angel like I had to come out of her really bad place when I got her like just really dark and uh she kind of saved me from that and she was my dog you know so like just all this crap was going on and then I'm going to a surgeon and he's saying you can't walk you can't run you can't swim you need to stop doing everything and that was you know when you like that was the moment I needed exercise the most and I couldn't do it it was absolutely horrendous and it just got you know I had I basically had like post natal depression, uh, post-traumatic stress from losing and yogi and n no outlet for it. Like it was just, so by the time I got to you, I'd had two years of that and I was just like, oh my God, I have, like, I have to do something. And I am a doer, like I'm not one to wallow and I don't like to sit and be miserable. I think if there's a problem, I can fix it. And I just needed somebody to say, no, you can totally fix this. And that was you. So you came at like a good time <laughs> in my life. I needed someone to tell me I could do this again and not just to give up and oh you've got a kid now I mean one of my physios said to me <laughs> I told you this uh oh you've got a child now you just need to give up all the stupid extreme sports and I'm like oh. I mean walking is not an extreme sport <laughs> like also like, know, did they tell you that if you were a man <laughs> like yeah would they do you know what I mean it's just ridiculous. So yeah, I was at a really hard, hard, and anyone who's got this diet food will say it's brutal, like, because there just doesn't seem to be an end to it. It never gets any better and nobody understands it. You can't really explain it to people because it just sounds so stupid. And everyone would say to me, oh yeah, my wife had that, my girlfriend had that, when they had a baby, PSD it goes away. And I'm like, I don't have that. Like, that's not what I'm dealing with here right now. <laughs> Well, what's, oh, yeah. what's funny about it as well is like SPD, right? Symphysis pubis dysfunction, OP. Yeah. Like, I genuinely don't think they're different conditions. Like, people mm -hmm. who come with like yourself who have pregnancy-related OP present with a a different form and manner of OP to people who are pregnant or are women, kind of thing. Um, like, the pelvis behaves a little bit different, but like the calculus is still the same. Your pelvis behaves badly. You need to make it behave correctly. Yours yeah. will do it a slightly different, but like. It's funny that like you've got like these kind of like these messages coming from people like oh yeah 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 like you know my girlfriend had that it'll go away and it's like yeah. well no it hasn't like I've had it for a while now it's not going uh, away kind of yeah. thing also that may not actually be good advice for those people either like just because it goes away doesn't mean that there isn't a problem there and like yeah. lots of people I think get OP later in life who may have had problems pregnancy during pregnancy or post-pregnancy and they often will say 
oh yeah, this pain reminds me a lot of the pain I got when I had my second child or, yeah. you know, after my first pregnancy and it went away. But like, it's kind of like, well, yeah, did it go away or did you just stop yeah. feeling it? Kind just, of, you or you stop moving as much, that's it. Yeah. And it's easy when you have a baby to stop moving as much. Like it is it's because, you know, you're sitting down, I would sit down for an hour, every two hours, I was sitting down for an hour to feed my child because it takes ages to breastfeed. Like it's just, it's easy to get into that habit. It's really hard to come back out of it and start moving again. So yeah, I totally get. I maybe that's why their 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 surfaces babies went away because they weren't moving. Mm. Whilst I was still trying to carry my child up mountains and <laughs> like, go running into the buggy, <laughs> obviously. Oh, it's, it's funny because when you like when you started describing your things and I tested you and I was like, oh god, this is gonna be hard. This is gonna be hard. Like I just I didn't say anything, but I just saw your pelvis and I was like. Oh god, it's gonna be hard. And then I, I like, I remember being like, "Did you do ballet?" And you were like, "Yeah." And I was like, "Yeah, it's gonna be hard." <laughs> Sorry. And it has been, it has been hard. <laughs> so, all right. So let's go. So we jumped in. We did that first pre session. We jumped in. We start doing the exercises and stuff. Like, at what point did did the uh, let's not call it the light bulb, but what point did you start to go? Did it start going from oh, this seems like a bunch of good ideas to Oh, I see how this works, and this will get me better. <laughs> like maybe no, <laughs> no, I'm not again. <laughs> like I mean, without going back a step, like is really overwhelming. I think it is overwhelming, uh, even for me to come and see see the plan. Like when you send over the plan, there's just like video after video after video, and you're like, holy shit, this! A I thought you were just gonna give me some more clamps to do or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, it's, it was quite overwhelming, but um, like it just it all made perfect sense from like the first video. Do you know what I mean? Like you know, you sell it well uh, because what you're saying is true. Um, and I think really from the first session, I certainly went away with having a lot of hope that this was the thing that was going to fix me, uh, or this was the thing that I was going to be able to do to fix myself. Um, and I think like watching the first few videos, uh. See, when I first started doing even the breathing, the first like breathing exercises, and I was like, oh my God, I can't do this. I'm a personal trainer. <laughs> like, I, you know, medals on my wall and trophies downstairs, and like, I can't like breathe. <laughs> so <laughs> I did. There was that moment where I was like, holy crap. But then I did think, right, this, is, this has got to work because it's so difficult. Like, even the most basic parts for the, of this for me are so challenging. Then like surely I must be doing something right. Like I, it may, I think I quickly realized that my body was in a, a big old mess and uh, there was stuff that I was gonna have to do to fix it. So um, yeah, certainly right from the beginning, I was bought into the process, uh, if that makes sense. Um, so for anyone watching this, the, the breathing that Kate's referring to is just a specific way in which you need to breathe to make sure that your core is activating, um, kind of these yoga, yoga based things um, that are very fundamental to human beings that we should all be taught in primary school um, so that we can all become healthy and, you know, well oxygenated human beings, as well as you know, <laughs> having stable spines. Um, but yeah, if you like, you know, when you first come to like, I remember when I first like learned about that and figured it out. And, I can I can remember just being because I come from this from lower back pain right like that was the thing that got me into this field and I had to fix myself from my lower back pain and I can remember first learning that and like you're hyper mobile so you know you're too floppy you're too bendy I'm hyper like I'm rigid and I can just remember like my back just going pop 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 when I breathed into it and being like <laughs> being like oh like like what is that? <laughs> <laughs> and be like, oh, I must not have actually been breathing into the bottom of my lungs and not been activating my core for maybe a good decade, maybe my whole life. It literally went like pop, pop, and then there was like a little one, pop, like three yeah. distinct pops. And I was like, oh, huh. like, <laughs> like, yeah, I can't believe that worked. And it was just like, huh, that makes total sense to me. And yeah, I remember the first time, but yeah, it's, it's quite insane. And then I can remember like the first month where I was trying to learn that and I didn't understand it at the time and trying to work my way around it and like being like, like in an exercise and being like, why are you holding your breath? Stop holding your breath. And it's like these things that you, you look at, you see, you read, they seem simple. You try to do them and it's amazing like how hard it is to do them. But then it's amazing how quickly you could be struggling as impossible as it is 
Then all of a sudden, yeah. a week later, it's like your second instinct. You don't even think about it, and you're just breathing correctly, and your feet are connecting. You don't even. It's like it's amazing. It's like it happens at a knife edge. It's like you feel like it's impossible, and all of a sudden, you just have this skill down pat. And you don't even have to think about it. It's so weird like that. Yeah. Maybe for you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it was like that for you. Once you got the glute activation, you were like good. You were good to go. <laughs> it was just like you know, one glute liked to fire more than the other, but you were good to go. I think. <laughs> Not my obliques, though. My oh, obliques to go. Yeah. <laughs> they're not so. They're not there, but late to the party. <laughs> um, well, you know, so, was there a moment for you where you were just like ready to drop your bundle, where you're just like, I, that's yeah. it. <clears throat> Sort of. There were there were moments of pure frustration where I was just like, oh my god, this I can't do this. Like, uh, all the oblique stuff, uh, all the static things. Because uh, I think it's easy to kid yourself on that you're doing it right when you're going fast. <laughs> it's really hard. To, it's hard to kid yourself on you're doing it right when you're doing it. You just can't be lazy when you're doing like the slower static, more static movements or uh, the more sort of isometric movements. So like. Yeah, there was times when I was trying to get my obliques activating and was just like, they're never going to work. Like, this is not working. I can't do it. What is wrong with me? Uh, I, yeah, certainly a, a few times I came to that point. I don't think I ever would say I got to the point of wanting to give up. <laughs> so I'm quite stubborn. I'm an endurance athlete. I did a ballet for 19 years. Like, <laughs> An hour of you telling me to do the same thing over and over again is not the same as like eight hours. Your dance teacher saying again, 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 <laughs> working way it's round and round circles. <laughs> so, <laughs> like I'm conditioned to pain and suffering. Yeah. <laughs> so that's fine. Uh, but yeah, there definitely. <clears throat> I think there were moments where I was hurting. I think that I think that was more it, that there were moments where I was in pain, and the pain was still there, and there were times where maybe it was worse than I'd had for a while. And I was thinking, it's not working. Like I'm either I'm doing it wrong, or there's something else going on that doctors haven't looked at yet. Or maybe because Jason's in Australia and he's not looked at my hips. You know, he doesn't know. He can't see. Like there's all those kind of like fears that go on. So I think there was more moments like that where I doubted, the, not the process, but I doubted my body. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Um... And it's funny, right? Because I, I feel like, especially with my back, like we're all still kids in a way that we just want someone to come in and just be like, here's the medicine and here you feel better. And it doesn't matter how many times you tell yourself, nah, I got to dig myself out of this. No one's going to fix me. I've seen everyone, right? Your body, yeah. your brain still wants to find like that. It's just like, maybe it's just like something else. Maybe like the doctor missed something. Maybe there's just like something that's just wrong with me specifically that's completely unique and that someone will come in and just give me the magic pill and I'll... Like, it'll be like a click, like I'm in chiropractic manipulation, and I'll just be like, it'll be all good, and all the exercise will start working perfectly, and it's like, it's like you can never let go of that hope completely. It's like your body just uh -huh. always wants it. Like, it just wants that yeah. magic answer to feel, be like a kid again and just have someone to come in and swoop in and take care of everything. And it's, it's uh -huh. quite annoying when it's just never like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, basically. I like, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying everything. Change your diet, do this, take dairy out, try turmeric every day. You know, there's a time where I was putting turmeric in my food like all the time, going, surely this this will help. It's anti inflammatory. Like, it's just, yeah, you try anything and everything, and yeah, you just want someone to come and say, it's okay, I'll fix it in two minutes. Here you go. And I actually did have a physio who said that, who, to be fair, is great. Uh, she, and she really unlocked my SI joints were really seized up by the time I saw her and she really did a good job of that but she did say to me I'll have you fixed within this session <laughs> and I was like don't say that to me because I don't believe you <laughs> and I, I was ironically I wasn't fixed in that first session you what a surprise however she had did love a lovely job of unlocking my SI joints so that was good but uh, I started it didn't cure my my OP, because <laughs> I have to move differently to cure my OP. Um, so, so tell me, how, what what let you, or how did you get through those moments? What like what was the thing that able like allowed you like thing? Because again, you were probably like you know you're top five toughest toughest OP patients. <laughs> so this is a good thing. This is a good thing. <laughs> um, so what let you like what, what what enabled you to get through that? Uh. 
stubbornness and determination on my part and also being able to uh just being able to vent uh, like I you know I would send you messages like oh I can't do this and, like <laughs> videos of me swearing going oh why am i doing it wrong like proper rage um that does that does help because then you would just remind me uh to suck it up and get on, get on really and it will, it will get easier uh, and you would explain things uh and on the very odd occasion where i needed a bit more input you would just reword things for me and give me a few different exercises to add in as well so that did really help because it made me made me think all right okay no I can do this it's just I could you know in my head it didn't make sense um yeah I need everything to be really really like almost black and white in my head with a lot of things it's just the way I am so it, like a lot of it was just verbal cues from you or like watching going back watching all the videos and uh, watching our sessions and listening to the words that you were using and trying to keep them in my head when I was doing the exercises because that's often like my brain it's weird and I, I'm writing a blog about this at the moment <laughs> like I, I will never give up if I'm on a spin bike and I need to go fast and get a certain watts or whatever I won't ever give up like I just won't and yet when I'm doing an exercise that comes like when it comes to resistance because I'm not that bothered about it like I'll give up really easily because <laughs> I think Oh, my body can't do this. Oh, God, I'll just stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it did take a bit of a bit of work to <clears throat> under, not understand. I, I knew it was good for me, so that's why I kept going. I knew I had to. But um, you've got the added sort of responsibility to you because you can't hide, you know, like when you're doing the programme, I can't not do my exercises and get away with it. Like I need to send you videos and you need to analyse them and then I need to go back and practice. And if I've not, you'll know. So... <laughs> There's that sort of parent-child relationship that you always want to avoid when you're working with people, with clients, but it's kind of just that natural, you kind of slip into it, like, you should not be disappointed in me if I don't get this nailed, so, like. It's so, so funny about that as well, is like, I, I, I'm really bad teeth, and I went and, like, uh, like you know, I, a few years, like, maybe five years ago when I went and visited the dentist, and, like, I could hear excuses coming out of my, when I first started working as a therapist, and I could hear excuses coming out of my mouth. I'm like, oh my God, I'm just like my clients. Oh my God. <laughs> and I was just like, no, nah, that's it. No, nah, I got to be like, I got to like, I, I, you know, I started like, you know, flossing constantly, using my toothpicks and brushing my teeth. Like, you know, I put a timer on my phone and be like, three minutes, not putting this toothbrush down till three minutes is up. Like, it's been like enough with these excuses, but like I turned straight into my own things and it was like, you know, and I'd, I'd hate going to the dentist because it's like, oh, he's just going to find all these fillings that I need to be in. He's going to tell me, and he'd do this horrible thing where he puts, like, this stuff on your teeth and it shows you where you haven't been brushing, like this oh, pink. Yeah. And it was just like, it was like, I was like, why are you going through this? Like, you're behaving just like your clients. Like, stop it. Think. And it was funny <laughs> as hell because it's like you act all superior when you're, like, talking to your clients and then you go to your own life and you do the exact goddamn thing. Yeah. It's so funny, isn't it? You can't help it. It just happens. Mm. But yeah, but it's just, that's why it's useful. I think that's why people have coaches. That's why they have yeah. uh, to advise them on stuff like that because it, it does help you stay focused and it, like you can't get away with anything when you've got someone breathing down your neck. So, <laughs> metaphorically in your case, I suppose. But um, but yeah, like those times, like just to be able to say, I'm really struggling with this. I can't, I can't do it. Uh, and for you to say, right, okay this is the way you need to approach it or and then of course then when you you do start noticing things like I think I was just expecting especially the, on this side I was expecting my oblique just to go ta-da I can do this here I am and actually what I felt was like this tiny little like maybe I'll switch on I'm sort of thinking about it like it was always just sort of half and then it just it does just get slightly stronger but because the <clears throat> the like it, it was so slow you know I mean it's quite hard to to notice that happening, I suppose, but then when it does, that's that's what keeps you. That's what keeps you going. <laughs> <laughs> a little victorious. Um, okay, so fast forward now. So you, so you know you're you're getting yourself back into your into your training and things like that, and you're working through. So so how how's it feeling? How's it feeling being back, being running, pushing yourself again? How how's it all feeling? Like like what goes through your head? How do you how do you mix it in with your rehab and stuff like that? How what's the process for you now? It's mental. So. Like I've signed up for 
<clears throat> first things first for me is always sign up for races because then I know what I'm working towards. <laughs> so I've signed up for three next year. Um, the first one uh, is on the 1st of January. Uh, it's the New Year's Day triathlon. And the last time I did that, I was five months pregnant. Um, so I'm like, I'm super, super, like, just so excited to do it. And I just, just, like, I don't care about how fast I do it. And I'm just, like, overjoyed that I can do it. It means so much to me. Um, and then I signed up for another couple next year, including a half Ironman. So that's kind of like the first, <clears throat> for me, even even just to be able to say, you know what, I could actually spend money on races and not be worried about losing that money when I have to pull out. That was like a massive, massive win. Um, so from there, then I work backwards and go, right, what is the training I need to do for that? And how do I fit in uh the rehab into that as well. So I think now I've kind of got a good schedule worked out. I'm starting to work with a coach again um, who's been quite understanding uh, of the process, I think. I don't think he really understands what's going on. Um, <laughs> but uh, he's trying. Um, so fitting it all in, like, <clears throat> it's been a bit of a shock to the system because, like, the, the process with you was the first time I'd really exercised a lot for since I'd had Ailey and uh, you know it's like it's it's a lot of work I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want to lie to anybody and say yeah it's like half an hour two two or three half hours a week like I was exercise I was doing the exercises for me two hours a day every day like I wasn't you know unless I was ill I wasn't really taking days off so like it's a lot and you have to you have to put the work in in order for, <laughs> to get better and the faster you do it the quicker you'll get better um so now I'm kind of still on that kind of schedule. I'm still doing two or three hours a day. It's just that sometimes I'm running and cycling, which is the worst thing ever. <laughs> uh, and yeah, trying to fit in my <clears throat> the sort of big lifts once or twice a week, and then um, just the little stuff. I feel like I still feel like I've got a long way to go with like this area. I don't know why, because that was always I always felt like I had quite a strong core, but it just wasn't working in the way it's supposed to be working. So <laughs> it wasn't, it was strong in poor ways. Um, so yeah, I feel like there's, I still feel like there's a lot to do. Um, I feel like I'm never doing enough basically. Um, so I'm trying to just add little bits in here and there, like, or if I'm in between clients and I've got half an hour, then just do a few abrial rolls or whatever it might be, some stretching if I feel like that's what I need. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, it just blows my mind that I've gone from doing nothing really to in three months like train properly the way I used to train like with a, a plan and a structure and go right you know I need to go and run six miles today so I'm going to go run six miles rather than just like ah, I could maybe go for a little jog or like Jason says I can run now so I'll just go and run a little bit you know it's like properly okay no I, I can go and do a plan I can put something together I can go and execute it and do what I need to do to get to the point I want to be in, in a few months time I'm still really slow but um we'll get there <laughs> don't laugh <laughs> um I, I think you bring up like you put up a really quick point at the start of that which is kind of like it's funny because people are like, well, how much should I do a day? And I'm like, you know, I'm always like, I don't care. Like, if it takes, like, there are some people who do, like, half an hour a day, like, three days a week and get better. And, like, and then there are some people, like yourself, who have to do two hours a day. And it's funny where it's just, like, you just don't even want to think like that. It's like, I got to do what I got to do, right? Like, if I got to do two hours a day, I got to do two hours a day. And it's like, if, if anything, it just means that you're stronger for it and you're a better athlete for it and you're like, thing but it's it's this horrible I uh, just like this horrible kind of like inequality of it and unfairness because like firstly there are human beings who sit on their ass all day and then just like do nothing do no rehab no stress don't bother doing anything go out on the weekend do whatever the hell they want and their bodies are fine and they just never have an issue yeah. there are, you know there are people who eat junk all day and never get fat it's like this is inequality in the way the bodies work across the entire mm -hmm. world um yeah. and that there's it's the same with like op rehab there are some people like when there are people who like tell me like yeah i'm only doing like half an hour a day three days a week and i'm kind of like if that's working that's good enough but i'm like it's like it's probability if you do two hours a day you're pretty much guaranteeing your recovery no matter how bad you are and if you do yeah. half an hour a day you're hoping that you're in the good side and that that'll be enough kind of thing but 
it's one of those like horrible things where he's like, there's no sympathy. There's no like thing. It's just like, you either do it and you get better or you don't do it and you don't get better. And there's like, and it's one of those unfortunate things as well. Like there's no alternative. It's not like to be like, Oh, you know what? Screw it. Yeah. This is just too much work for me. I'll go get surgery and you know, maybe it'll be like annoying because I have to get surgery or it'll be expensive, but then I'll be better. It's like, no, you get surgery. You won't be better. So it's like, (laughs) it's like you either do it and you get better or you don't do it. You don't get better. And there are nothing else, no other options. You're, which is always good when people, I like when people say to me, you're my last hope. It's like, great, good. Now there's no other thoughts in your brain. There's something else. Is there something else you can do? That's it. Now you're committed. You're like, you've got nowhere else to turn. I've got you right where I want you. That's it. <laughs> That's exactly how I felt when I came to you. Like, the, you, were, you were literally the last port of call for me. I was not, I would never get surgery anyway. Like, if, as long as I can avoid surgery, I'll always avoid surgery and I don't want needles on my hips ironically uh that's it <laughs> yeah as uh you don't sugarcoat it uh, jason that's for sure <laughs> like see when you say you're my top five hardest uh, clients to treat like I, I want to be proud of that but i can't be because i know like, you'll just turn around and say well it's your fault you're that bad <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> well when i say that though it's kind of like it's more the intention of going like it's not your fault that you happen to do ballet it is your fault that you ran whilst you were pregnant, but it's not like you knew the consequences of what would happen when you were running when you were pregnant. It's not like if someone had given you a snapshot and said, hey, Kate, this is what it's going to be like six months after you're pregnant if you keep doing what you're doing. I'm sure you would have been like, oh, yeah, no, I better stop now. You know what I mean? It's not like someone came with you and gave you like a clinical reason. The same thing happened to another one of my clients, Karina, um, who like, you know, running was her sanity. She didn't run. She was insane. She had five kids. Like, you know, that was just what happened to her. <laughs> And yeah, so it's kind of like, it's not like you'd sing, but the thing when I always think like, it's your fault, it's like, I always think that's a good thing. If it's your fault, you could fix it. It's like, it's when it's yeah. not your fault and it's someone else's, that's the worst. Then it's someone else has like control of it and you got to wait on them and you got to deal with them. Like, I would rather everything be my fault and I'll like, I'll wear it because then it's like, cool, I can fix it. I can do something about this. I don't need to wait on anyone or deal with anyone. <laughs> so it's always a place yeah. of love when I say it's your fault. <laughs> 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 um, say. um all right so we should we should finish this up but um tell me if someone was thinking about like jumping in and trying this what what would be the advice that you would give them to to help them be successful and getting through the program uh just know that you can like it does work you can get through it like there is literally light at the end of the tunnel sometimes it doesn't feel like it when you've got op it feels like you'll just have it forever maybe you've had it for a really long time um but <clears throat> like i honestly i had numerous people tell me I should not run again like ever like a lot of people a lot of medical professionals a lot of clients a lot of friends every, like lots and lots of people <laughs> like just stop running that's the answer and I'm like I don't think that is the answer and it's not the answer <laughs> you can move and do whatever you want <laughs> whether it's running or football or whatever it may be uh if you follow up the program uh you can 100% get better and um, so don't be scared uh, and put the work in and you will get there. Awesome. Well, thank you so, so much for doing this. And for anyone who's watching this, hopefully you can take a lot away. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs>